Hi everybody, my name is Antoinette and this is Board Game Inquisition, the place where I try to give you two player insights into some of the board games you might want to have in your own collection someday. So Turing hits Kickstarter soon and it's got a pretty novel idea behind it, but I'm pretty sure it's too trendy a title for me. And if you'd like to know why, well here's five things I think you should know about it. Alexa, are you an AI? That's right. Hi. Turing is a game about figuring out who the AI is at your table. On a turn, someone will take on the task of answering a question. They're the responder, using a piece of art. But their answer is placed side by side with that of the AI. And the question is, how well do you know your friends? The winner is the person who is at least five points in competitive mode, or until each player has been the responder twice in the cooperative version. Thing one, what's this game all about? Turing is a game that asks you the question, could you tell the difference between an answer from an AI or a robot or from a human being? Um, and this comes from this Turing test, which is kind of a, a scientific method whereby um, they try and determine if a computer could give an answer like a human. Um, and the game here is asking, well, could you really tell the difference? Um, I think this is a fantastic topic for a game. If anything, it's really, really exciting and unusual. Um, and especially given the times we live in right now where we're questioning, you know, are, you know, computers going so far ahead of us um, that they're becoming like people? Um, or, you know, what is it that makes us human in the first place sometimes in this kind of automated world? I think there's a lot here to think about um, and it's a question that I particularly enjoyed. Um, but what this game really comes down to is how well do you know your friends? Um, and I like that quite a bit. I think that, that kind of fits very well in here. How well do you know humanity or humans as a whole? Um, so the other part here is that you use art to give your answers. Um, and I think this is also really fun because art is sub such a subjective thing that you can't help but end up learning a little bit more about who you're playing with accidentally and while going through kind of their answers and their thought processes. Um, so yeah, there's kind of a lot of um, very small but interesting stuff going on here. And theme wise, the theme is very, very strong. Um, now, similar games to this, well, we've got to talk about something like Dixit, perhaps, or Mysterium, where you're kind of guessing, you know, based on art kind of answers. But it also reminds me quite a bit of Apples to Apples, which is a game where you have to imagine the answer somebody else might have come up with. Thing two, what kind of actions are you going to be performing on your turn? So Turing is a pretty straightforward game, which centers around the following. There is one of you who's going to be the person in charge of giving out answers. And there's the rest of you who will be in charge of guessing who the answer came from, either the player or the kind of randomly generated answers that come from the AI. Um, so the person who's giving out the question, um, it starts with kind of a, a key card in the center and it's up to them to place other art cards that they feel might be related to this first one. Um, so while they're doing that, they also generate answers for the AI, which are at random. And then you place both of them out in front of everybody, do the first bit in secret so no one knows whose answers are whose. And then the group decides who answered what or who, which pile belongs to, to who. Um, and then the roles reverse and then you continue on. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty simplistic game for sure. Um, but uh, the only real barrier between you and figuring out who answered what is those very mysterious pieces of art. And I kind of like that. Thing three on the table. I think most of this game's table presence comes from its cool and kooky art. I think it's spotted a mile away. I also really appreciated the fact that you can use the lid of the box as a special screen for hiding behind your secret answers. Um, I thought that was really, really cute. Um, Space-wise, this game is small in all sorts of aspects. It's got small cards, it comes in a small box, it doesn't take up much space on the table. It's also quick to set up and quick to put away as well, so it's got all those advantages. It takes two of us about 20 minutes to play, and you can see this being much longer depending on the size of your group and how often you like to argue. Um, and the rulebook was pretty straightforward and easy to follow. 
Replayability wise, I think that just comes from the nature of the game. It is a guessing game after all, but there is huge variety here in the types of cards in the deck and there's lots of them as well. Thing four, how does this game look and feel? So I'm dealing with a prototype copy here, so I assume nothing is entirely set in stone, um, but there isn't a lot to judge here either. Um, there's a lot of cards um, and the card quality seems to be pretty good. I do wish the cards were larger. I'm not a big fan of these little cards. However, I think that takes away from some of the portability the game might you know, be trying to do. So I kind of understand that. Um, the art on the cards, however, is absolutely fantastic. I love, love, love the art. It's really surreal, really kooky, really weird. I just, I really embraced it. Um, this might be part of the reason why I wish we had bigger cards, just so I could, you know, have the art in bigger format, which is probably true. Um, overall, this is a very neat and tidy little game and that has some really enchanting artwork. Thing five, is this game actually any good? So Turing isn't the most original idea. However, I do think it makes for a really cool party game because it combines those fun things we like where you're guessing at something, but you're also like trying to know people better as well. Um, I think it makes for a really, really fun and entertaining experience and one where it isn't necessarily about winning or losing, but about the kind of exchanges you have while you're playing. So yeah, I definitely recommend this to be played with more players. So hence my major downfall here is the fact that I've played it with two. Um, and whatever way this has turned out when myself and my husband played, we, we never once chose an AI answer. We always chose the, the human answer. Um, and I don't know what that says about us, but what it said about the game to me was, I really wanna play this with a group of friends. Um, it might be that we know each other too well, who knows, but I think this is definitely a group game, one that you could have a ton of fun with. And if you're into those kind of guessing games, maybe like Dixit or things like that, I think this fits in nicely alongside with all of those. And it's got some kick-ass art to boot. So yeah, if you've got a party coming up, I would definitely be checking this out on Kickstarter. Do I think you should have Turing in your collection? Well, if you're the kind of person who likes working out whose answer is whose in a tidy and short format, then I think you should be checking this out on Kickstarter on July the 19th. You've been watching Board Game Inquisition, why not like or subscribe to the channel so you can get updates about my future videos? Or if you've got any comments or queries you'd like to make about Turing, why not shout them off in the comment box below? Tune in again next time for some more short and informative board game reviews.